So today I thought I'd show you how to make a crusty white sandwich loaf of bread. Yeah, gluten-free bread. And it's just perfect for sandwiches. If you just want a bacon sandwich, if you want some toast, if you want a toasty, if you want just a beer, I could go through all the different sandwiches in the world. Whatever sandwich you want, this is the perfect loaf of bread for you. If you want to check out the full written recipe for this, you'll find it in my brand new cookbook, How to Make Anything Gluten-Free, and it's not the only bread in there, there's actually loads of recipes, there's a full bread chapter, so if you're missing bread and you're gluten-free, this is for you. I'll link it all below um, in the description, so if you want to check it out, you can do, but I thought I'd make a video as well, just to make it that little bit easier, so that you can read along if you want, but you can also follow along with the video, because that's what we want. We want all these recipes to be really simple, easy to make, and delicious, not tasting gluten-free. So without further ado, I'll show you the ingredients and then we can get going. Okay, so here are all the ingredients you'll need. Let's start over here. So firstly, I've got some gluten-free plain flour. Now this is a flour blend from the supermarket, but you can make your own. I've got a recipe for that on the blog, so I'll link that below. Then I've got some rice flour here. I've got some salt here. I've got some xanthan gum, which is really, really important. And then even more important, I've got some psyllium husk. Now you'll see this one is nice and pale in color, which is really, really important because otherwise, if you get one that's dark in color, you'll probably get a slightly different colored bread. And if you're trying to make like white bread, you want it to be white. So I'll show you the one that I use actually. Um, this is the one that I use at the moment. As you can see, it's really nice and pale. So I'll link that and I'll also link some other ones that you can get that I would recommend. So then on to the sort of yeasty bit. So I've got some water here. This is warm water or it will be warm water because I need to make sure that it's perfect temperature to add the yeast. When we're talking warm water around 40 degrees C will be perfect. Then I've got some yeast here. This is like a, a dried active yeast. So I'll just show you the one that I use. I use this one, it's not an easy bake yeast, it's not quick yeast, it's a dried active one that you need to add to water to activate it and froth it up, which is really important in my opinion because it means that you can see that it's working before you start messing with everything else so you don't waste other ingredients because if it doesn't froth up then you don't want to continue, you want to start again and get some more. So this is the yeast I'd recommend, this is gluten free. I've also got some sugar here which I add as well as the yeast. Oops to the water um, and that just helps it to activate that little bit more because you're kind of feeding the yeast with some sugar. And then my more wet ingredients as well as the water of course is some egg whites. So I've got pretty much a couple of large egg whites there and some cider vinegar. Now if you don't have cider vinegar you could use um, a white vinegar but these are all the ingredients that I use for this that I recommend. If you switch ingredients out things will be different. But this, if you follow this, honestly, you've got something, you've got something really good here. So let's get going, because it doesn't take long um, to mix it all together, but we need to start. And firstly, we're gonna be starting with this, the yeast. Okay, so I've just warmed up my water. I just did this in the microwave. Um, and then I use my thermometer, which shows me that it's around 40 degrees, which is perfect. So then we just add in our sugar. Pull that in, our yeast, pull that in. I cover it with a tea towel and I leave it somewhere warm for sort of around 10 minutes. But basically it's not just about the timing, it's about what it looks like. So at the moment it doesn't really look like anything, but after about 10 minutes it will really froth up and that will show that the yeast is active um, and therefore we can continue and make our bread. If it doesn't do that, don't keep going and hope that some magic will happen while proving and in the oven, because it won't yeast has to froth up. So yeah, let's just leave this to do its thing. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to put it somewhere that's relatively warm um, for that 10 minutes. And whilst that's doing its thing, I'm going to mix together my dry ingredients so they're ready for when this is done. Right, so I've got my stand mixer bowl here, which is where I'm going to add all those dry ingredients. And I'm going to add it to that because this is where we're going to mix it all because you really want something that can give it a lot of welly. So I would really recommend using a stand mixer or if you really have to use an electric hand mixer, sort of, you know, one that you do that with. But doing it by hand is something that I, I won't try because I haven't got the energy. Like, it's just not possible really. You really need to put it on the stand mixer for five minutes plus. So if you think about 
doing that by hand is difficult. So make sure that you are sort of prepared and you've got something electric can, that can do the work for you, unless you're super, super strong. So I'm gonna add all my dry ingredients into here. Okay, so here is the yeast now. It has frothed up loads. As you can see, it doesn't look anything like it did 10 minutes ago. And if you looked at it from the side, it's got a proper like beer head on it. So, you know, that shows that it's activated. If none of this happened and it kind of looked the same and you could still see the little individual bits of yeast, then that's not right and you'd need to start again. But how this is, is absolutely perfect. And I can now add it along with all my wet ingredients to my bowl. So now I'm gonna mix it all. So I'm gonna use my, my stand mixer and I'm just gonna use this sort of beater. I'm not using a dough hook because at the end of the day, this isn't a dough, it's more of a batter when it comes to gluten-free bread. So I'm gonna mix that um, for at least five minutes on a pretty high setting just so that it all combines and it starts to hydrate the flour and starts to become what will then become an epic loaf of bread. So when you're making gluten-free bread, it isn't like making regular bread, but the reason for that is that we're trying to make the end result like regular bread. So this is how we have to do it. So I'm gonna put this on the mixer now, mix it for a good five minutes at least, um, and then I'll show you what it's like. So whilst you've got the mixture on, make sure if you see that the mixture is going up the sides a bit, like it has here, that you just scrape it down every so often so that it all evenly can mix together. Because if it's up the sides, it's not properly mixing with everything else. So just get it like that and then you can turn it back on to mix once more. But this looks almost done. Okay, so this is what the mixture should look like at this point. It's very, very sticky. It's not something that you would want to handle. It wouldn't feel very nice in your hands. It's not like a dough that you could suddenly knead, which is what you might imagine at this point in bread making. It's just very, very sticky. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually just gonna put that there or take it out or whatever, leave it for about 10 minutes or so. Um, and this is just to help everything hydrate even more because obviously we put a lot of liquid in and we want sort of it all to combine and our flour to be fully, fully hydrated. So I just leave this for about 10 minutes and then after that, we'll be putting it into the tin. So whilst we're waiting for that 10 minutes, what we can do is we can get our tin. So I'm using this tin. I will put a link to it below and I'll put the measurements below because a lot of people think that you can just use any old loaf tin, something called a loaf tin. Obviously it makes a loaf of bread, but it's not quite the case. If you want to make the bread as it is in the book, this is the tin that I use, but obviously there are lots of other bread tins. You can try and test what you want, um, but you might need to cook things for a slightly different time because it might be shorter, it might be longer, it might be higher, lower, whatever. And whilst that is just sitting for about 10 minutes or so, another eight minutes for me, I am going to line this tin. So this has been resting as it were for about 10 minutes. And although it doesn't look hugely different, it feels slightly different, which is good, perfect for going on to the next stage. And the next stage literally is putting this into our bread tin and allowing it to prove. So I'm gonna sort of spoon slash pour into the bread tin now, make sure it's nice and sort of smoothed over so that it will sort of rise in the right way, as it were, you won't have any sticky up bits. So yeah, I don't know what I'm telling you, I'll just do it and show you. <laughs> Right, so I've got all my bread batter into my tin, but obviously we don't want it to look like this. We want it to be sort of nice and smooth so it proves well. So I'm gonna take my pegs off because they were just there to keep it in place when there wasn't the batter in. And then I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna use a couple of things. I like to use a palette knife, but I also like to use my fingers. And so that it that doesn't get really sticky or anything, instead of like using flour, I like to use water because we don't wanna add more flour to the dough at all at this point. So if you put water on your fingers, you'll find that it doesn't stick. Okay, so I smoothed it all down, made it nice and even, and now it's time to prove. So I like to prove in my oven at a really, really cool temperature for the oven. So mine's on around 35 degrees C, but I know not all ovens do that, or you might be using your oven for something else. So just in a really, really warm place, if you've got an airing cupboard, that's great. Um, 
yeah, somewhere that's warm. We wanna also cover this, we don't wanna leave it open because it will dry up. So you can either cover it with some cling film or if you don't wanna use plastic, you could also cover it with a nice clean tea towel, just something that keeps it sort of all in place. But yeah, on a really warm day or if you've got it somewhere really warm, this can kind of prove in about 35, 45 minutes. Other days it takes up to an hour, maybe slightly more than an hour. You really want to look at that. So you don't want to go on just timing, you want to go on what it looks like. So ideally what I'm looking for is that it almost doubles in size. So we're sort of halfway up the tin at the moment. We're wanting it to get sort of up to the top of the tin, maybe even slightly above, then I'll know it's done. So I'm gonna put it to one side, cover it, and then I'll show you once it's, fingers crossed, proven. Okay, so here is my bread. It's been proving for about 50 minutes and now it is ready, well basically ready to go in the oven. I've preheated my oven really, really hot, so we've got it on 240 degrees C fan. Um, so if your oven doesn't go that hot for some reason, just put it on the hottest it can go because you want it really hot to start with and then we're gonna put that for about 20 minutes, then reduce the temperature down for another half an hour or so, um, so that it you know, it crisps up, we get a nice crust, but it also cooks all the way through, which is obviously very important. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to get a bit of flour and dust the top. And I'm also gonna do a few little slashes across the top as well. And then it will be ready to go in the oven. And I'll show you how I put it in the oven because there's something um, a bit different, a bit additional that I need to do for the oven. So I actually add water to the bottom of the oven boiling water um, which works as steam and it helps sort of cook the bread in the way that we want it to but first I need to dust this with a little bit of flour okay so now this is ready for the oven okay and there we go doesn't that look amazing? It smells great too. I wish you could smell it. It just smells like proper fresh bread, which is what it is. Um, so what we need to do now is we don't want to keep it in the tin because it will get soggy underneath. So we need to take it out. We need to do this quite um, soon after we get it out of the oven and you let it cool on a cooling rack, something like this, um, until it's completely cool. Don't think that you can just eat it or slice it when it is still warm because it is still cooking when it's still warm. It's still becoming the awesome bread that it's gonna be. So there is no eating it until it's cold. I mean, you can, but I'm telling you that you probably shouldn't because it will just be so much better and it will be so, so worth the wait. There we go, sounds hollow. So we can just let this cool. So if you've enjoyed this video and wanna watch more videos like this, you might like to check out my gluten-free for catch video or my gluten-free baguette video. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.